This is part two in a four part series on my Lightroom workflow. So if you haven't already seen part one, I encourage you to go back and check that out. We talked about import settings and making sure that you get your photos in the right place with the right file names and the right information. So now what we need to do is we need to start reviewing the set because I'm going to shoot a lot more images that I'm actually going to use. So how can you quickly and efficiently review your set and save yourself time only editing the images you really want to keep. I use two different methods of set review, depending on the kind of images that I'm looking at. I'm gonna call one of them additive review and the other one subtractive review. And what I mean by that is that sometimes I will review a set and I will go through and rate the ones that I like the most. And those will be the ones that I focus on when I start editing the set. On the other hand, sometimes I'm going to go through and select the ones I don't like or that are not going to be useful, and I'll be subtracting them from the set. Now, why would I use these two methods? Well, for example, if I shoot an event, I generally am shooting hundreds of images, of which the client only needs a fraction, usually 20% at most of the images that I shot, which means that most of the images are going to be rejected. So it would be more time saving for me to only star the ones I really like. So let's say I'm reviewing these and I say this one I like, and I'm going to hit five on the keyboard, give that a rating of five stars, and I'm going to move on and I'm going to hit five and rate all the ones that I really like. So I have tons and tons of unrated images at the end of an event that I'm not turning into the client. However, when it comes to portraiture, a lot of times, unless it was a really bad session, a lot of times most of the images are usable. The lighting is good because I set it up myself. And a lot of times we're just looking for the images where the client might have had their eyes closed or the subject is somehow out of focus or something like that. So what I'll do in a case like that is I will select all of the images and I will default them to five star rating and then I will filter them. You can always open up this filter bar. Just make sure you turn it on and off where you can see your filters here on the bottom section. And I'm going to hit this five star. Now nothing happens because all of my images are five star, but let's say that I'm going through here and I see an image I don't need like this one. And I say, nah, we're not gonna use that one. I can drop the rating on that. I hit zero, drop it to zero stars, and it now disappears from my filter in this set. So you can see here, I'm only filtering by five star images. If I remove this filter, it comes back, but this is the only image in the set I don't need right now. And so I subtracted it so that I can filter by five stars. Whereas on the other hand, with these event photos, I'm gonna go through and I'm only gonna pick the ones I really, really love and then all of the rest of them I will filter out at the end after I have gone through them. So I'll hit five star. And now you can see that right here it says that I'm looking at 18 of 35 photos, which that's a big difference. 18 of 35, almost half the set I really don't need to see. I only need to see the ones I really like. So additive or subtractive, depending on whether I'm going to keep most of the images or I'm going to discard most of the images. And you can tell that there is a five star rating, which means you can rate one through five. I only use five and four star ratings. And here's why. And this is just the way that I work. So I'm sure different people do it different ways. What I'll do is I might have five starred two things that are very similar. I'm not sure which I like best. And at some point I decide on one, I'm going to four star the other one. So I just hit four on the keyboard, assign it a rating of four star. Now, if I'm filtering by five star, I don't see any four star images. However, if for some reason I'm inspecting that photo later and I zoom in and I think, it's not as sharp as I thought it was, or actually the composition of this one isn't maybe as good as the other one. I can now go back and look at the ones that I had four starred and I can see, you know what, let's trade it for that. I'm gonna five star this one and then four star the other one. So that I show that I still have a star rating, right? So I know I liked it a little bit. So four and five star are the only two kinds of star ratings I use. 
And usually with a large event, if I've got thousands of photos, I go through and I five star them and I always five star way more than I need. So that is my first pass of set review. I five star them and then I come back and I color label them. So sometimes they'll be really great images that you definitely want and you kind of want to highlight them. Then I'll add a color label. And I might add a color label for more reasons than just I like it. For example, I might separate off different parts of an event based on a color label. Maybe I'll take all the images that were portraits of people. I'll just select them here down on the bar. And I'm going to give them a yellow color label or a blue color label. And you can do this by hitting the keys on the keyboard. So one through five star the images with one star up to five star and then six seven eight nine apply color labels so if i hit six it's a red label seven is a yellow eight is a green nine is a blue etc so i might give these all a red label why is that helpful well later when i'm editing the set if all i want to look at are the portraits of the people that i shot or the groupings I can come over here, hit the red, and I'm now filtering only by my people. So in this case, this was a runway show, so I might group all my runway show shots together. So I might give them a yellow color label. So now I have other shots. You know, I got shots of food or I've got shots of clothes, but I can always find my runway shots with the yellow label, and I can always find my people shots with the red label. This is event photography, but for portraiture, I usually do it differently. So a lot of times when I do a portrait session, I'm going to send these images off to the client for proofing. And then the client who's hiring me to shoot the images is going to choose the portrait that they prefer out of the set. So what I will do is I will star the images I'm going to send them for proofs. And then when they've made selections of the one they prefer, I'm going to come back to those file names and then I'm going to give them a color label to note that these were the selections from the client. So I can always see what I had originally starred, but then on top of that I can see what the client selected. So I can just filter by the green color label. And in this way I go through each one of my sets, I review them, I give them at least a star rating, and oftentimes add a color rating on a second pass just to weed out the images I don't need and make sure I'm highlighting things correctly. And now we're ready to get into the editing. And that's gonna be in our next video on part three. So be sure to come back for part three where I go through my workflow in terms of editing both for event photos and also for portraits. And if you enjoyed this, if this video is helpful, you know what to do. I'd really appreciate your comments, your likes, your subscribes, and I'd love to hear your feedback on how you use Adobe Lightroom and the different techniques and tips that have been helpful to your workflow. I'll see you next time.